What is going on, fellas? In today's book review, we got The Ultimate Scam by William R. Turner. And fun fact, I'm pretty sure the guy lives right next to me. He lives in Ardmore, Pennsylvania. So, uh, they stole your pants, but you smile as you hand them your suit and tie. So this is all about the Fed and how they print unlimited amounts of money and you don't even know about it. And it's the ultimate scam because it, you know, if you have money and they print more of it and make more circulation, all of a sudden your dollar value goes down and most people don't even realize it ever. The average inflation rate they try to aim for is 2% every single year. So you do the math, 2% one year, 2% the next. It doesn't just, you know, add, it compounds massively. Just how like last year in 2022, you had a high of inflation of like 9%, but then year to year, it might be 5% now, but it's not just like, it didn't go down, it went up by like 14%. So uh, your average person is wondering why, oh, inflation is only 5%, last year it was nine, but now prices are still extremely high. It's because they print all this money <laughs> and it's like crazy how your average person doesn't know it. Some operators in the ultimate scam in an attempt to broaden home ownership among the poor, lower the existing mortgage credit requirement. This act became an important factor in the information of an unstable credit pyramid that eventually gave away a severe business depression is likely to follow the financial disaster. The ultimate scamming takes place all the time in the open and it's not illegal and the ultimate scammers are the government officials. So you elect certain people, I guess in Congress, the president and such, and then they put certain people in, in like the head of like the Fed, the Federal Reserve, the ones who, you know, money was supposedly backed by gold and then all of a sudden it went away and then they kind of just print infinite money to do whatever they want so if you for example let's say they get a bill passed to fund a project or let's say the project's worth 400 million in order to do and it might be something good if it doesn't come from the taxes it then comes from printing money so a lot of people they're like yo this person's going to cut taxes things are going to be better all of a sudden they cut taxes but then they inflate the money supply by printing infinite amounts of money to supply whatever they want and then all of a sudden your money is now more worthless and it's just a hidden tax um many money printer go burr inflation many citizens don't seem to understand that it is mostly the inflated dollar that is causing the problem with the high prices and it is the scammers who are the ones that create the inflation any attempt to stop the inflation opt to cut back the rate can cause misery and business recession. So if all of a sudden you have just like right now where you have, they turned off their money printer, I guess they turned it back on in recent months, but say for example, it was off for like four months, all of a sudden businesses can't profit because money is not flowing throughout the whole system. The whole thing, if they print enough money and they stimulate the system by giving money to all, or they give money to stimulate the economy and businesses, people are gonna spend more money they're going to make more money, but your money's now worth less. Your stocks might go up a percent or 2% or, or like 10%, 12% a year. Your house might double in the past year like it did. But at the same time, if your house doubles in price, inflation was kind of through the roof and your money is not, it's not like you made a crazy profit. If you, inflation's at 4% and you profit at 12%, it's like, what is that? Maybe like 7, 8% you actually make. It's like, People don't account for that at all and then think, oh, I'm making all of this money when in reality, that is just usually not the case. And you got to think, if someone had the money printing machine, don't you think they could pass a bill at like NASA for like, they're spending a billion dollars a day, or the military, they're spending so much amount per day. It's like, who's the one that keeps, they don't even have a list of tracking this stuff. What's stopping them from printing? If they print trillions every year, what's stopping them from printing 400 billion and then giving it all to each other? It's like they have the ultimate setup to do whatever they want. But imagine that. Imagine they print trillions every year and I said the number 400 billion, who's going to know where that went? Imagine 300 million, 500 million. It's like those are pennies to the trillion. So who's going to notice all that money could just go in whoever's pockets, whoever's running things at the top. In 1776, the dollar was defined as the value of a certain amount of gold or silver. In 1862, the government issued money calo or paperbacks. These greenbacks were not supported in value by precious metal, which you should, because with gold, gold's inflation rate is only 1.2% of year. So that's because they mine X amount of gold per year, which only is at 1.2%. And the funny fact is nowadays, even though we have these crazy technologies like phones and such, 
the amount of gold still is about 1.2%. And then gold doesn't really ever be destroyed. It doesn't corrode, it doesn't rust. It goes from solid to liquid back to solid and there's no issue with it going away, which is pretty amazing. And it's a conductor of electricity, does many great things. People wear it as jewelry. So it has many, much, much value. And there's only a limited source, which is awesome. The Federal Reserve was created in 1913. Between 1910 and 2006, the dollar lost 96% of its value. In 1911, a loaf of bread cost five cents. In 1929, 10 cents. Now bread is in the dollars. But if you think about it, imagine 20 years, the cost of bread doubled. But you go back 30 years now and the cost of bread, what, goes up like 5, 6, 7, 8, 10x. Um, it's just crazy what can happen in such a short period of time, especially now when they print so much. They had a little uh, table or a chart in this book that gave a very good representation of when the Fed started and how inflation or what the rate was going from like 19 whatever when it started all the way to now. Um, a penny and a nickel used to be used in the 19th century. Now, no one uses them, let alone a quarter. I, dude, I don't think I'd even pick up a dollar anymore, dude. You go to, like, Starbucks and the cheapest coffee is, like, eight bucks. It's, like, eight bucks for a coffee, dude. And minimum wage really hasn't, like, risen at all. It's, like, crazy. 1935, Social Security came out, pay-as-you-go plan. But how does that work when all of a sudden... You know, you have people now where Social Security is going to run out. And even though you invested money way back when, and now a bunch of years later, that money is kind of worthless because it's not worth as much. So all these systems that we have in place, they don't work. That's why I find it really funny how people have Roth IRAs and 401ks. Number one, why are you trying to be rich when you're 60 and old? Why not be rich now and grind it out? And your money is not worth that much then, dude. A million dollars is not that much money nowadays. A million dollars can buy you a house in like maybe two houses in a suburban neighborhood at best. I don't really think you could retire on <laughs> that much nowadays. Social Security in retirement doesn't work when your $1 40 years later is worth 19 cents and can't even buy a lollipop. You lose money on a savings account. Yeah, so if your money's in a savings account, dude, it's like if inflation's at 2% or even at 9%, it's like you're losing like 8, 9% a year. Like you need to like find other, it's in this, I don't know how, your average person is pretty much screwed over. There's no way your average person's being able to do anything nowadays. Everyone I know is in credit card debt, student loan debt. They're still paying off their car, their house. Like these people, like I really don't know how some of these people would be living. Their bonds 30 yield 6% doesn't really make money when inflation is high. So imagine you have a bond that's 30 year, 30 year yield at 6%, but inflation is more than 6%. That bond goes to like underneath. Insurance policies are a big scam. If you bought a house in 1940 for $10,000 and sold it for $15,000 in 1950, when inflation was 60%, your house really lost value and you have to pay taxes on that product. So imagine inflation was more than what you sold your house for, right? And then all of a sudden you lost money, but technically you profited and then you got to pay tax. It's like, you're just losing in so many different ways. Who are the ultimate scammers? Your elected national officials, certain appointed officials in the Federal Reserve System. When Congress wants to fund a new project but doesn't have money from taxes, they print money to pay for it, making inflation go up. Banks borrow money from their depositors and lend it out to others for a higher interest rate. Loan paybacks are easier with inflation. Businesses with use inflation to improve their earnings, their image slash profits. We don't like to pay taxes, buy now and pay later. So that was the ultimate scam. I've been doing finance now for like five years and dug into everything. So a lot of stuff I already knew, but now I'm like, going to the roots of like, or trying to find more of the roots of like, what did money used to be? It seems like gold is it. And then how does it all work with the mining process and stuff? But seeing also the years when stuff started and then seeing the different charts um, about, you know, how, when the Fed started exactly and all the years inflation reached, when you see how much the 
each dollar's worth that's different points and nowadays it's like hyper inflated it's like i uh, think it's just cool to see so that is the book the ultimate scam hope you guys enjoyed the video other than that have a good day and deuces